Hello friends, Namaste. This is Manal Joshi again. Um, we uh, have been talking on the Facebook Live for um, quite a number of uh, time during the coronavirus pandemic beginning. So um, with a lot of requests from many friends, I am resuming back again. So this is a different format. What we are trying to do is um, we will take different questions uh, that may be coming from all our friends. And it will be a friendly discussion, like all the things that uh, we have been practicing at Wellness by All Means will be shared. Um, so if you have any question, you can always post it Facebook Live right now. And then we will also post this on our YouTube channel. So if you have any burning question about how to uh, you know, be happy in life, how to do the proper breathing, how to stretch, what is yoga, any question you can ask. And we can try to discuss about that. Not that like I'll know everything, but we'll try to make an attempt to go in that direction. Because that right now the knowledge is all universal. It's very difficult to find out what is original from anyone. Because there's so much of transformation happened to the knowledge, and everybody thing has been shared for such a long time in the human history that it's very difficult to say that where the knowledge is coming from. So, but if you look at the yogic tradition, yoga believes that the knowledge is always one. There is a Sanskrit uh, proverb that you used to learn in the school days. It says, Satyam ekam vipraha bahuda vadanti. That means there is only one truth and all the masters speak differently. So if you look at uh, right now, whatever is happening in um, the YouTube or TED Talk, anywhere you see, like if you look at any particular subject, all these masters are speaking different angles of the same concept. So um, this actually reminds me of the fact that all our scriptures are very much absolute in nature. That means anything that you can implement in your life, any small concept, it will still open up the possibilities in your life. I always give this analogy of uh, if you think about uh, an indoor stadium, like we have one here close by, there could be 274 gates and you don't have to enter to the stadium through all the gates. You just need one gate through which you enter and then you can see the show. Likewise, another example could be like an ocean. An ocean could have millions of vista points. That means you can see the beauty of the ocean from any of those vista points or the visiting spots. There will be some variation like somewhere there will be a little bit more mountaineers, somewhere there could be more uh, sand, somewhere there could be more uh, plain. You know, many different varieties will be there, but the nature will be still beautiful. And if you have the eyes to appreciate the beauty of the nature, of the ocean, any single vista point, that will also lead you to the beauty of the nature, beauty of the universe. That means that's the ultimate truth. So likewise, if you read any book, if you listen to any story, if you really go to the depth of that story, the real meaning is already there. There is always a, a door to the divine, always. I will a um, little bit make it more concrete with another precise example that uh, I was really um, impressed with uh, when I heard it. So it so happened like one person, uh, like one, uh, one woman, she wanted to read Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is a scripture that um, all the all we Indians follow, Hindus follow as a doctrine for spiritual knowledge. So she had heard about that and then she wanted to read it. She wanted to understand what's there and how it could help her to lead a spiritual life. And she was of course very rich, so she could afford to any of the priests in the town. So she interviewed many people and then found out one of the best pandit who is a very good scholar 
in Bhagavad Gita and she hired him to teach her the Bhagavad Gita. And it so happened that the t- teacher came on a Subh Muhut, like a good time, probably on a Thursday like this, when we believe that all the good things should be done on a Thursday to start something new. Subharambe, Gura Sister. That's a Vedic astrology point of view, that Thursday is a good time to start. So on a beautiful Thursday morning, the priest came and started teaching her Bhagavad Gita. And we, as we all know, the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the first sloka goes something like uh, Dharma Kshetre, Guru Kshetre, Samaveta, Yuyus Chava. This is the first line. So that means in the Guru Kshetra, which is also called Dharma Kshetra, the land of uh, holding the truth, the Pandavas and Kauravas are all together to prepare for the battle. That's the literal meaning of that first sentence. But because this scholar was very smart, he tried to explain in a very creative way. Like Kurukshetre Dharmakshetre, Dharmakshetre Kurukshetre. See, he started using in different combinations of these two words. And then he explained to this person that the real meaning of this one is Kshetre Kshetre Dharmam Kuru. Just a jumbled up word. Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre, Kshetre Kshetre Dharmam Kuru. That means in whatever field of action that you are in, do your duty. Do the righteous thing. Find the truth. Find the divineness in them. You will always get there. And of course you might have taken the whole one hour to explain the same concept by different analogies, different stories. And this lady got so impressed with that first statement itself that Kshetri Kshetri Dharmam Kuru that means whatever field that you are in, do your duty based on the education that you have got, based on the training that you have got, based on the skill that you have got. And that will take you to what we call the emancipation, nirvana, moksha. And then, to the surprise of the priest, she said that, I don't want to read anything else. I think this is good enough knowledge for me. I would like to practice my whole life this simple principle of Kshetre Kshetre Dharmam Kuru. I will try to do my duty in the most truthful way, in the most righteous way, all the time. And that's what is important. Because one particular sentence or maybe two words or one word itself of the 700 slokas of Bhagavad Gita could be a gateway for you to find the truth ultimately. And that is the beauty of the spiritual scripture that we all are blessed with. Everything is connected to the source. That is again coming from the fractal science. We are also a part of the whole source. So yoga believes that you are not separated. We all are part of the uni- universe. We are not apart from it. So when we understand that we are part of the totality, you know, the magic happens. All our stress, worries, anxieties, all disappear. Because we are the part of the same source. Right? In another example that we can say, like, you know, whatever I am going to say, you already know about it. You may say, you may ask me, how? Because the same divinity who is enabling me to speak and the same divinity is also enabling you to listen. So the source is same. We are all sharing the same consciousness. The human consciousness is always one. The truth is always one. Ekam Satya Vipraha Bahuda Vadanti so when we learn about this one, one of the practical things that I have seen in my life that a lot of times, no matter how much successful you are, there is always an element of you no know, competition that comes in. Oh, that person is so successful, I am not there. That person has made so much of money, I have not made it yet. That person has got so many big buildings, I don't have one. Right? So when you start comparing with people, you start becoming unhappier. You becoming jealous, you become angry, you become frustrated, you become stressed out. But when we realize slowly, slowly that you also have the access to 
to the same source and you are also doing the same work that other people are doing it, there will be a sense of cooperation, there will be a sense of inspiration and that is very important to understand. Otherwise, the misnal concept or the ignorance of ourself could lead us to a very stressful and depressed state of mind. But when we always feel that we are connected to the source and whenever I need something in my life, it will of course come to me as it has come many many times, millions of times in my personal life, in your personal life too, if you can appreciate the nature, the universe always takes care of us. And if you try to do it very hard, try to do it in a forcibly manner, in a forcible manner, it won't come to us. It will rather have a very frustrating experience. It, like uh, having a quicksand, like if you try to hold it very strongly, and most of the things will come out from the crevices of your fingers. But if you hold it very gently, whatever that belongs to your palm, it will remain with you. So that gentleness and calmness is also a very important aspect of fulfilling your goal. Because whenever we want to be creative, using our mind, using our intelligence, using our supreme consciousness, we have to be calm and peaceful. We cannot be forceful. Like I always give this example, like if you want to cut a tree, right? So if you take the axe and then try to hit it hard, the forceful that you become, the sooner the tree will fall down. But if you have to win somebody's heart, if you want to do something nice to someone, if somebody is angry and somebody is mad at you, you become forceful, that person will become three times or four times more angrier. Right? It won't work. And in that case, you have to learn how to surrender. You have to learn how to say sorry. You have to learn how to seek forgiveness. You have to learn how to say those loving words, those words of appreciation. That will really open the gate of someone's heart. So whenever we want to create something with our mind, with our heart, with a subtle power, with a subtle faculty, then we cannot be forceful. You have to learn how to accept as they are and you have to learn how to surrender. One of my friend's dad, he actually told it in a very nice way. People are talking about, hey, complaining about spouses in a very formal or informal tea talk. But he was uh, seriously observing the relationship that we all have in our normal friend circle. It's very good because, you know, we have been married uh, for the last 27 years. So a lot of people have been married for 20 years, 25 years, 20, 30 years. You know, they've been very loving couple. And he said that even though you complain about each other, I don't believe that you guys are unhappy. He said that I always see these two things in this community. He felt that there is a greater presence of, or a, a, at least from his experience, he said that if you have these two ingredients in your relationship, you'll become very happy. And that is called Prem and, and Prem or Samarpan. That means love and surrender. So friends, if we have these two words, love and surrender, we will ultimately know the truth. There is no doubt about it. You have to love each other, you have to love our own self, you have to love the God, and you have to trust, and you have to surrender. So these simple words could definitely act like a gateway for us to be reaching out to the divine source, which is not separate from us, but the veil of ignorance will be taken out and then we will enjoy life every moment of it. So let's do a little bit of meditation on this concept that we talked about because every time that we meditate it assimilates or it helps us to assimilate the knowledge that belongs to us so that gates open up a little longer time so that you can easily enter to that domain of divine. So let's Keep the back straight and upright, keep your eyes gently closed and just take about two minutes to meditate on this concept of how
how there is only one truth and how through love and surrender we all can experience that oneness notice the moment you keep your eyes closed and just think about your breath your mind is so calm like the beautiful ocean the depth of the ocean is always so calm you can reflect on whatever we talked about in just last 10 minutes i give various examples to explain the concept and try to recollect and if you here a couple of words that's coming to your mind and if you have a vision of few things that we talked about that be wonderful to reflect and introspect how the same concept is applicable in your own life You can slowly open your eyes, and friends, that's a great uh, privilege for me to reconnect with you all because you have been very inspiring through your comments, through your likes. So, if you like this little short talk and then little meditation that we did, we would like to continue this uh, experience. We would like to come back again on um, Sunday, so Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays, 8:30 this particular time for about 15-20 minutes. we'll explore together what are new things that is coming up what all that comes to our mind we can talk about it and we can slowly meditate for 2 3 minutes just to appreciate that concept so if you like this concept please uh, give some comments and then we'll also post it on our facebook tonight 8:30 so that there will be a premiere show so just have a simple technique like this to connect to everyone and then see how this whole world can be a better place with a mutual help from each other thank you very much namaste have a wonderful day